Ordinance to remove domestic violence cases from municipal Damn court. It. And I think, oh, he's here. Uh, all right. Well, then, then I'm you. Great. Uh, well, thank you. So, as you all know, um, we are one of three things, um, or you might know, we are one of three cities that constitute uh, non felony level domestic violence in our municipal cities. Um, they're one of the Things that they come by attention about the fact that we do this is just the cost that Aurora taxpayers incur for doing this. It obviously requires us to have more judges, it requires us to have more prosecutors, it requires us to have more public defenders, more support staff. Um, our city has a ton of priorities um, that our taxpayers expect us to address. And in looking at how much the city of Aurora essentially subsidizes Arapaho Adams County, um, you know, it's upwards of $3 million a year. Um, our initial estimates and this past legislative session, which just ended or is about to end. Is it ended? Yeah, it's ended yesterday. Um, what day of the week it is. Um, they, there was a, a bill that passed that would limit municipalities to prosecute municipal um, domestic violence cases from engaging in, in um, fixed contracts with for public defense. And as you know, that was something that we had explored. And while we're not actively doing it, my concern is that the legislature is trying to hamstring um, local governments in our ability to control costs. And with the number of, of domestic violence cases that we prosecute um, through our courts, again, at a, a significant subsidy to the counties, because in, in Arapahoe County, for example, or the 18th Judicial, every other city, the 18th Judicial, will prosecute all domestic violence cases, with the exception of the non-felony level domestic violence just that go through our courts. So it's not like they can't do it. It's not like they don't do it. Uh, it's just that currently we we have um, a structure where we are handling those cases and it's a significant amount. So I would uh, this what this ordinance would do is it would remove those types of cases um, from going through our courts. I would obviously and there would be a process needed to do this. You couldn't just turn it off. Um, there would be ongoing cases. Um, and I know that there are other issues that we'd want to work through. So I would, you know, hopeful that it, maybe we need a companion resolution to work with the city manager to actually determine what that would look like for us to begin to unwind that obligation. But uh, it's something I think that we ought to consider, um, especially at the the cost that we would save uh, by making this change. Yeah, I heard what you um, for me, uh, I don't really think this is, is up for conversation, and it's just wonderful how many good things have been pointed out to me, like when Ms. Cadiz pointed out that that um, defendants are terrified to go to county jail, but they, they like being in our municipal jail. This is just yet another thing that's really eye-opening um, and, and, and has uh, caught my attention, that with us being one of just a few uh municipalities that prosecute domestic violence case the cost that our taxpayers are enduring on that um i love when this type of information comes forward to me quite frankly um i support support this wholeheartedly regardless of where the legislation goes uh, i don't care what happens with the legislation i think that this is exactly what should happen anyways uh, and I think that all domestic violence cases should go straight to the county to begin with, and we should not be subsidizing the account. Uh, so I'm in full support of this. Does anybody have anything? Um, I just have one request. If we um, gather a group together besides just the city manager, if you could include Judge Day, myself, and Elizabeth, since we need to be part of the plan um, yeah. on what to do going forward. Yeah, I, and I would be, like I said, I, and it might be necessary. I was, I didn't see Jason here this morning. I don't know if you didn't see him here, but I was going to ask. Maybe we do run a companion resolution that would put together a working group to say if the ordinance passes, they, uh, we determine what the, you know, our, how we would unwind the process because obviously we want to do that um, in a way that, that you know, was respectful of all of the, the victims who are in the process already. 
And, and I would say that, Candace, too, I just would want to emphasize uh, that that if that was agreed to have a planning committee of you, uh, Judge Dave, Jason, and uh, Ms. Khabib, it is very much, and I'm sorry, Julie, uh, it is very much only a uh, planning committee on how we are going to move forward as should this pass, it becomes the law. So it would simply be a planning uh, does anybody else have anything to say about this? All right, I, I vote to move it forward. Right. That will move forward. Are you moving it forward to study session or straight to council? Study session. Yeah, that's what I would ask for is go to study session. Yeah. All right, we will move on to item 4B. Ordinance to remove the sunset provision for the mandatory auto theft and FTAs. Come back up. I'll start and then the chief. Um, so a couple of years ago when we ran the ordinance that um, placed uh, minimum mandatories on motor vehicle theft, um, I put in that ordinance that we would have a sunset because we wanted to determine whether or not it would be effective. And I actually believe that, that we should uh, sunset all regulations and all of these types of criminal laws to reevaluate them. And if they're good and um, showing um, promise, then we will. We should do exactly what I'm proposing today, which is to reauthorize it and remove the the sunset. So that's what this word there would do. Chief, do you want to touch on anything? I was going to talk a little bit about some stats um, in terms of our motor vehicle thefts um, have dropped 22% uh, in the city of Aurora, um, and that since the ordinance went into effect through uh, 2023, so the end of last year. And looking at year to date. Uh, this year compared to last year, we're down in motor vehicle thefts um, over 35%. Uh, and so I think this is one piece um, of um, the efforts that we're making in order to uh, reduce motor vehicle thefts in the city of Aurora. So I think it's important to, uh, I think we've, we've got reduced stats and we need to uh, continue with what we're doing. Anybody else have anything? I vote to move this forward. I, Steph, I do see you on camera now. Would you like to take a vote on this? Yes, I'd vote to ex to do the same. Okay. And just do you want your vote on record for item 4A, the ordinance to remove domestic violence? I don't know if you were on for that. Council Member Sunberg and I vote, voted to approve it and move it forward. Would you like your vote on record? Yes, I'd like to move it forward to the next step as well. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I was having technical difficulties. Thank you. No, if I could, I like this. This one, we can go straight to council um, since we've had this conversation yeah. about that. Okay. Your approval. Uh, last item: 4C Public Safety Action Plan. And I understand that Chief Otten, you are leading us. Yeah. Thank you. And and I'll be leading heavily on my partners. If there's any clarification, but Jason says this regrets he was running a little bit behind this morning, so he asked me to move us through this. Um, and so we'll just get section by section. Any specific questions? Um, so I, I would just ask if there are any questions. I know you got to sit back up uh, prior to the meeting. So I don't know if there are any questions on uh, section one on metrics. I just have a minute to read it though. Sure. Do <laughs> clarify? Okay. No, all right. Section two. Pass this. Is it up to this time? All right. Okay. And talk about people, whether there's anything specific that you want to call out and these that are under uh, variation. Uh, are you specifically looking at your date changes? Question. Violence. I'm not sure if we've got any reps here to question tonight. You five, go ahead. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, just a little bit of updates for youth violence. Um, so for our no full grantees, um, our agents have served um, 5,669 youth um, year to date. Our grant term ends June 30th, um, and half of the agencies have already exhausted their funds. Um, any other updates that we have, our youth summit is going to be held today at the Beck Recreation Center at 3 p.m. And then we will also have resources at the Let's Talk About It event um, that is going to be held with um, the NAACP um, along with APD this month. We will be having our Aurora Save um, Governance Board meeting at the end of the month on uh, May 30th. Um, and then just some past events, we had a city, uh, we were at the city table for the CCNA luncheon. Um, we were at the Southeast Open House. Um, at the Southeast Recreation Center, sorry, open house. Um, and then we also met with Denver's YVP team um, to talk about wraparound services between both cities. Um, and that's all that. All right, section four, I'll turn it over to Jessica, your representative. Sure. So the numbers are here, and just I think more importantly, just a hiring update. We'll be doing interviews next week for a program administrator for this position as Courtney um, has transitioned out um, and working collaboratively on that hiring process with the police department. Um, and otherwise, the program is moving along in the absence. And um, Sergeant Graham, do you have anything else to add? Sure. Update on clinician staffing. We're down one clinician still. The next clinician riding along today to see if we're going to offer her a job or not. And then we still need to fill that third AMRP spot. And we'll be losing another one after next week, I think it is. So we've got a couple of interviews scheduled to try and replace that spot. Okay. And Emma's not here today, but if there's any questions about the homelessness section, um, the number of uh, notifications, we had 57 abatements um, in April, um, 79 people were abated and 24 um, accepted uh, shelter at the pallets. Um, we're seeing um, the ability to um, put in anywhere between five and 11 people each week into the pallet shelters. Jeff, do you have any questions about the public safety action plan update? Did have a question about um, the. You said that people who went from the uh, abatement to the pallets was twenty four. What happened to the rest of the people? So the rest of the people did not um, accept uh, shelter or services, um, or there was not a pallet shelter available. So there's always uh, beds at Cavitis that people can accept. People often don't accept um, that as a service, but they are very often, and um, we're seeing a lot of competition for the pallet shelters. Does anybody else have anything for the public safety action plan update? Okay. Uh, with that, we will go into miscellaneous matters for consideration. I have one. Uh, when I'm wrong, I will say I'm wrong. Off, uh, Detective Brian O'Dell, I owe you an apology. Several of your colleagues have reached out to me in your defense, um, and, and that you are truly a good officer. So, Detective Brian O'Dell, I owe you an apology, uh, and I was wrong. Other, other four, I cannot wait to see you in this city. Does anybody else have any other miscellaneous matters for you, sir? something. Oh, go ahead. Well, Steph, you can go first. I was, um, I was, as, as you know, in my ward, I try to be as active as I possibly can. I shop, I live, I do my business in my ward. And I was up on ILIF and Chambers um, last week, Saturday, and they had been robbed. The beauty supply store had been robbed, broke the window, um, stole 
$1,500 worth of merchandise plus her cash machine. She was understandably very upset. It has been assigned a number, but I'm concerned that that area over there has been repeatedly targeted and been robbed. This is like the third time since I've taken office that they've either been vandalized, burglarized, or outright robbed. So I want to know what we're going to be doing about putting a little more heat on this area since the daycare is right over there too. I've gotten emails about people using drugs back in that little cove back there behind the daycare. Um, and it, it's just becoming a real problem. And I want to know um, how we're going to address this so our, you know, the businesses over there can be safe. Um, so um, what I'll say on that is we will uh, we'll do a deep dive and get our crime analyst um, to see what types of crime has been happening in that area. And then uh, we'll incorporate whatever uh, units are our units. Uh, you talked mentioned robberies, uh, you know, box there, RIT team, and then any other uh, any other any of our other uh, resources, um, you know, that we're able to dedicate to that um, in order to address that. Um, and additionally, um, our community services and doing some. Uh, so I think what's important is to get out and talk about crime prevention. Um, so include a piece of that uh, in that as well. So we'll look at it and see what all types of crime uh, is is happening over there and and uh, you know to what level and kind sort of plan together to address it with the resources that we have. Just a little follow up. My main issue with this is that, um, you know, when talking to the merchants over there, they um, and it was interesting because while I was there, I saw a vehicle go through the parking lot, police vehicle go through the park parking lot. But I think what they're feeling um, and this this um, business owner expressed to me that she would have loved to have had a little more face time and maybe some active. And I know you're stretched. I get it. But when you have experienced trauma of a robbery. To feel like somebody is there, you know, giving you a little bit of extra attention and saying, look, I understand what you're going through. I sympathize, I empathize um, and, and give them a more attention. I think it will help them feel better that we're actually doing something, even though the investigation is going to take time. I get that. But emotionally, after somebody has experienced that kind of trauma, to feel like somebody cares means a lot. So if we could, you know, think about how we want to manage that and do that, I think it would be very appreciated. All right. Appreciate that. Does anybody else have anything for miscellaneous matters for concern? So as council members, especially those in charge of a ward, we receive text messages, emails, phone calls from people concerned about very specific things. Uh, and when it comes to crime, and we don't want our residents to feel like we're losing ground. Or it's, it's the new norm. Uh, you know, the illegal discharge of weapons in parks and neighborhoods, that's the new norm. We don't really care that much about it. Maybe we'll get rings around there and pick up some casings, whatever. So I think, you know, as Jason and I talked about, the, the task force that, that you guys have formulated to respond to parking lot takeovers, the street racings. When we talked about that initially, we talked about putting it out there in the public for them to view it and see it and hear the numbers, right? So we need to reassure them continuously. And I know there's the social media outreach, but I don't think we, our residents can get enough of that. How, it's a damn rare thing to see uh, speed enforcement in this city. It's refreshing. I see it once a month, it seems like. So we need to put that out there. Hey, slow down. Hey, this uh, these casings are now being picked up. Uh, these, this shoplifter who you see with the blurred face being taken out of Target that loses over a million dollars from during theft. I just we need to show the public that we're on the offense. Uh, I believe, and you know, I, I push that. Yes. I don't want you have to take my microphone. So I'm saying, um, one is Camp Spark. If you'll recall, is is the uh, young women's camp that we have out at uh, the academy. The registration for that has opened up. The event is July 26 through 28. So um, it's specifically for young women because 11 to 19. So um, if you've got anybody who's interested in that, I hope you'll get them signed up. Can you say that date? Yes, ma'am. Uh, July 26 through 28. Um, and it's for uh, young women each 11 to 19. Um, we will have table at fire station nine 
in early June. We'll give you some more information on that. Um, that's for the community to come out and see the current fire station. That is the one that's slated for a uh, demo and rebuild. And so we want the community to be able to see the existing fire station and then the plans for the fire station that's going to be replacing it. And the time will be coming for that? Yes. It'll be early June is tentatively when it's planned for, and then we'll get you specific times. And then finally, um, on May 18th, Saturday, May 18th, we have the Rotary Safety Field Day. Um, this is a event out at Capstick uh, where you can learn firefighting skills, uh, do touch and trucks, you can do bunch of demonstrations, things like that. The Aurora is putting this, uh, is putting this on in partnership with us as a fundraising event for the Kids Fire Safety House. And so uh, they're actually the investors that are sitting in up there and they will give me so the event is to support that. You can get the free event for members of the community to staff or whatever donation someone can provide um, to go towards this project. Should we open up all of that except the date time? May 18th. It's from 9 a.m. to noon at Capstead. Can we be sent out with calendar? I stairs without that would be yes. No problem. It's the same day as my water event. Yeah. Actually, we're seeing that it's a mix with a couple of things to yeah. the fall of firefighters memorial. I just found out yesterday. So, yeah, so it's a little bit of a but they picked the day and even that's the day of giving for for, for, uh, okay. for, for Rotary nationally. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone else have anything for miscellaneous matters to be considered? I was going to um, with that, our next meeting will be uh, oh, I'm sorry. What would you like to say? I just wanted to uh, talk about the um, our bias training, managing bias training uh, mandate by the consent decree that we finished uh, that training got uh, to be in compliance with the consent decree. We actually finished it two weeks early and we also have our uh, basic class for June uh, that we currently have 25 uh, people that have accepted positions for and we still have plenty of applications to go through uh, some uh, Basic applicant summaries to go through. So uh, the new class is looking to be another really good class in terms of uh, people and numbers in the class. Hopefully our next meeting will be June 13th right here at 9 a.m. This meeting will adjourn.